and it's too heavy. I had a sneak peek yesterday. I actually wasn't quite sure if this is really the MultiPlus 2 or if they have just used this box and sent me the original inverter I have ordered. Because this is not what I've ordered. Well, guys, the reason, the reason for the upgrade is we will have more batteries, so we should have more inverting power from 3000 VA up to 5000 VA with this inverter. See the the initial um, see the inverter I have right now is the um, Victron Phoenix inverter smart 48 volt 3000 VA and um, I'm still not 100% sure why they call it smart inverter because I think this is I don't want to say I don't want to say dumbest but it's the unsmartest inverter they have I think because it's not communicating to anything else it shows up in the VRM you can see how much power it delivers and everything but this is basically it you cannot upgrade the inverter power with another one and operate them in parallel or create a three-phase environment or something so the only really smart part of this inverter is probably the the load dependent low voltage shutoff you can set up in the inverter so I thought, Andy, if you upgrade your inverter, you don't buy the smart inverters anymore from Victron, buy a Victron Phoenix inverter, because they are actually smart. They come with a CAN bus interface and you can connect them in parallel, up to six of these inverters in parallel, which could give you 30,000 VA, 24 kilowatt on a single phase. That's insane, right? You can also connect them in a three phase environment and can and you can create power networks up to 90 kilo VA. And because the Victron inverter smart here, as well as the Victron Phoenix inverter, they're only for off-grid installation. They don't have any AC input or something. They only run on battery, total off-grid installation. And this is what we have here. So I thought, well, get one of these, and then later down the track, you can buy a second one and hook them up in parallel, which would give us 10 kilo VA, like eight kilowatt all in total. So we could potentially hook up up to six of them in parallel to give us all the power we need here to power the garage, charge the vehicle, and eventually power the house as well. Well, so I've ordered one from Springers in Brisbane. This is the company where we have been last year to get some advice in how we can connect the house here and stay within the legal requirements I have here with my contract of my AC coupled solar. And they replied the next day and said, well, we cannot get the Victron Phoenix inverter at the moment. They have a delivery time of two weeks. Do you wanna A, wait? Do you wanna have the Multi Plus 2 for the same price? Or three, do you wanna have a refund? And I was still thinking about it for one or two days and suddenly, yeah, exactly. The delivery was here. They have made the decision already for me and just sent me the MultiPlus 2 for the same price as the Victron Phoenix inverter I have ordered. So the MultiPlus is around 15% more expensive than the Phoenix. It has a lot more features than the Phoenix, which I don't need at the moment. We will need them later down the track maybe when we connect the house to the off-grid garage here. But at the moment, I don't need any of these features. I cannot use them because I'm not allowed to hook up this inverter here to AC. So, um, let's have a quick look inside what is going on. There we go. It is really the MultiPlus 2 48 5000 
with a 70 amp charger inside. Yes, the MultiPlus 2 has an inbuilt charger to charge your batteries from the grid. That's one of the many, many features you get with the MultiPlus 2 in comparison to the Phoenix inverter or to a Quattro. Yeah, and here you can see the symbol. It has a built-in transfer switch. I think it has actually two transfer switches to meet all the regulations for different countries. AC in and two AC outputs. One is the essential one and one is the non-essential one. So in case of a power loss, you can make sure only the essential load is running from your battery and non-essential load will be turned off like your like your hot water system or your pool pump for example which doesn't need to run from the battery if there is no ac power and it also has two more no it actually has three more amazing features which will be very handy down the track so you can use this inverter here for mobile or stationary setups for a grid connected, off grid, hybrid. Basically, this one connects to any AC input power you have. It doesn't matter if it's shore power, if it's grid power, if it's a generator, it doesn't matter. And two of the very cool features of this inverter, they are called power control and power assist. Power control means if you are connected to the grid, which has limited power only, like on a campground or in a harbor, or if you use a generator, for example, the inverter makes sure it is not exceeding the set power. So and then, well, if your, if your connection at the campground has only 10 amps, for example, and you are using like 5 amps over here with your load, the inverter makes sure it uses the other 5 amps to charge your batteries at the same time without overloading your incoming AC. And if your load increases to 8 amps, it charges your batteries only with 2 amps. So only the excess energy will go into your battery and it makes sure it's not overloading your AC input. And you can also enable the power assist feature of this inverter. If your load exceeds the incoming AC power you have set in the inverter, it uses additional power from the battery to supplement your power needed for your load. So if you have only a 10 amp input from your generator, but you have a 20 amp load on here, it will use additional 10 amp from here. So 10 amp from AC, 10 amp from the battery to power your 20 amp load. So these are two very cool features of this inverter. If you use them for mobile applications in a boat or in an RV or in a, in a truck or something, connected to a different kind of AC sources. And then the inverter ensures it is not overloading your AC input. And the third feature of this inverter is, even in an off-grid situation, so you have no AC input at all, like here in the garage, no AC input, just off-grid, you can actually use this inverter with your existing AC coupled solar. Because usually your solar system on your house will turn off if there is no AC detected. But the MultiPlus creates its own micro grid. So it simulates a grid and your grid tie inverter at your house will recognize this and keep pushing power into the micro grid. But what is it doing with all this power if you are not connected to the grid? Because it cannot feed any power into the grid. Well, it uses this power to charge your battery. So you can have your normal DC MPPT solar charge controllers as well as an AC coupled solar system, an existing AC coupled solar system on your house, for example. And they are both charging your battery at the same time. And when the battery gets full, usually the solar charge controllers, they turn off automatically as per your programming. And the AC coupled solar will usually not stop producing energy because it always thinks there's the grid. I can export all this additional power to the grid. Well, the MultiPlus will then shift the frequency. It will increase the frequency of the microgrid it creates just slightly enough for your grid tie inverter to slow down and eventually shut off completely. So the MultiPlus takes care of all that in an off-grid situation or in an on-grid situation. So it will use your grid tie solar to charge your battery. Once your battery is full, it will export energy. If there is no grid, it will throttle down your AC coupled solar until it shuts off. 
So it protects your battery as well. It doesn't overcharge your battery, even with a grid tie solar system. And I found this amazing. I've never heard of this before. I've never seen this before. I'm not sure if there's any other inverter which can actually do that. Well, here it is now. We have one here right now in the off-grid garage. Well, the reason I was hesitating to accept this gift, this free upgrade here to the MultiPlus 2 was because I was thinking, well, at some stage I want to expand this 5 kilowatt inverter, the new one, with another 5 kilowatt inverter here. So we've got 10 kilowatt or 10 kVA of available power. We can still do the same with the MultiPlus as well. But of course, I have to buy another MultiPlus now. I cannot parallel a MultiPlus and a Phoenix inverter. That is not possible. It needs to be the same device, the same firmware. Yeah, they need to talk to each other via the CAN bus. And because the MultiPlus 2 is more expensive than the Phoenix, and I don't need these additional features at the moment, I was thinking, why should I pay for that? Why not go with the cheaper option and buy the Phoenix inverter? which I can parallel as well down the track. But now I've got this one here, so what shall I do? Should I give it back and wait for the other one to arrive? Or should I accept this upgrade and buy another MultiPlus 2 down the track? I mean, eventually, once our contract finishes here for our feed-in solar power, I can very nicely use this inverter here because it meets the current regulations here in Australia with two transfer switches and all the other safety stuff. I just cannot use it right now because of my contract for my solar feed-in. So the thinking at the moment is I will upgrade to the MultiPlus 2 5000 VA. Mm, later down the track we will see if we have another one here on the other side if, if I still need more power. I'm not sure because uh, because this will be like 45, 48 kilowatt hours of battery capacity here and we then have only a 5 kilowatt inverter connected. But people have asked already in the comments, Andy, what are you doing after building this shelf? They were a bit afraid of me shutting down the off-grid garage in here because the project has finished. We've done all the work. There's nothing else to do. Well, this is not quite the case. Uh, I've got more projects here for the next 17 years, I think. So there might be a couple of more videos coming after we have finished the shelf here. <laughs> yeah, don't you worry. The off-grid garage has just started. We have so much work to do still. Not with this shelf here, but I've, I'm already planning battery 3.0, which will be amazing, which will be much easier to follow than this one. This is just a prototype. I wanted to build for a long time, but the battery 3.0 will be a community project again. It should be much simpler for you to follow and build exactly the same battery at home as well. It will be a similar setup, but um, different. Um, yeah, different, different. Okay, guys, so far this little update video, I just wanted to keep you in the loop what I'm planning to do. Uh, the next question would be, what are we going to do with the old inverter? Right? Because we cannot parallel this one and the new one unless we have separate circuits or something, but they cannot be connected to the same phase, to the same active. So I'm not sure if I should keep this one here or if we should use this one for another project or so. Uh, if you have any ideas, please leave them down in the comment section. I'm always keen to read your thoughts. Okay guys, so far this little update video here from the off grid Garage. As always, thank you very, very much for all your support here on the channel, especially for all people who have donated beer. I really appreciate it. And also a big thank you to Springers in Brisbane for upgrading me for free from a Victron Phoenix inverter to a MultiPlus 2 inverter. Great service. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged. And thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. This is the best part of making videos. It gets new comments. I'm really keen to read all your comments. I love this stuff. All right. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.